So if you're anything like me, everything behind me looks really sexy and attractive and romantic. Um, if you're interested in growing vegetables or running a farm as a business, uh, I know the first time I saw videos of farms like Never Sink Farm or Rose Creek Farms down in uh, Tennessee, it really got me excited about doing this. Um, and that was before I knew any better on uh, what the reality of that, all that situation is. And so in my last video, I did a explanation on a couple of the crops that I grow to make a lot of money doing this business. Um, and it's really a little glimpse. It's not, it's so much more complicated than something you could explain in 20 minutes. But this video, I wanted to go into a little bit more of uh, the reality of what it takes to get to this point. Um, because it's, it's sort of a highlight reel. The YouTube videos I'm making are highlight reels. You can't explain the reality in 20 minutes, but in this video, I'm going to do my best to explain that and give you seven ingredients that you can use to try and create a farm like this. If you're interested in something like that, some seven things to think about at least, um, because you really can't have all of this kind of stuff without these ingredients. So let's get to it. So, we're producing about $4,000 a week in vegetables right now. And if you're not um, into this kind of business, you know, that could sound really attractive. And, um, you know, in my last video, I think I made it sound pretty easy to get to that level. But it's not easy at all. There's just a whole lot of blood, sweat, and tears that go into getting to that point. Um, and it's definitely not something for everybody. And the first really important ingredient to get to that level is infrastructure. So to get to the point where you can produce vegetables at that level, you need a lot of money. I have probably $100,000 in infrastructure on this piece of land. This is only a 1.5, no, I'm sorry, three acre parcel of land. We're only growing on about a half an acre right now, but there's probably close to $100,000 in infrastructure here. And what I mean by that is greenhouses count as infrastructure. This is, these are actually, this one's actually a pretty cheap high tunnel greenhouse. Um, this was about 10 grand, but um, there's a whole lot more money in there besides just the greenhouse. Um, the, probably the most important and expensive piece of infrastructure on this farm is that farm hydrant and what it's connected to. We've got seven farm hydrants on the farm with a hundred foot deep well that waters everything. That's expensive. That cost, uh, let's see, that cost about 13 grand to drill the well and get the pump. We have a very fancy variable flow pump that's sort of a, has a throttle on off. It's kind of complicated, hard to explain in this short of a video. Farm hydrants and all of the uh, pipe that will go underground, that's probably another three or 4,000 just in materials. And then I paid a guy to help me dig the trenches, which are all six feet deep because in Wyoming, for things to be frost free, it needs to be six feet deep because um, we get extremely cold winters. Um, that cost another thousand dollars. So we're looking at uh, 13 plus, three plus four. So that's about $17,000 just in the water infrastructure alone. And over here, we have another greenhouse. This is our nursery. It's the long-term nursery. And I really spent a lot of money on that because that's going to be there forever. Um, that was about $25,000 because that's a really fancy greenhouse with um, steel. Everything is steel, so I don't have to replace it. This one has a lot of wood in it. So the, that eventually will need to be replaced and upgraded. And some of these things could be improved a lot more. I'm going to put another $15,000 in it this fall for just heated nursery tables and a heater and all that kind of stuff. So um, when you start to throw all those numbers together, it really starts to add up. Um, this building right here is our wash pack building. And that is basically about, I think it costs 13,000 just for the building. And then all the materials inside, probably another three or 4,000. So there's another $17,000 there. Um, all of the tools on the side of this building, I'm um, just guessing that's two or 3,000 um, 
to make all of the stuff that we need to make happen on the farm happen. That cedar was a uh, $600. That is probably the most valuable tool on the farm. Um, and I'm not even counting, um, the truck that I just bought. Um, that's actually a necessary piece of infrastructure too, because I can carry about $4,000 worth of produce in this truck as an eight foot bed. So the point I'm making is that $4,000 a week sounds easy, but it's not. There's a lot of investment in there. And the way that I made all that happen was I got a loan from FSA, which is Farm Services of America. They loan to tons of farmers around the country. Um, and uh, I got a micro loan from them for $50,000 um, that helped me make some of this stuff happen. I paid for a lot, the rest of it by, my, by the business. Uh, but that $50,000 helped me get to where I'm at couple years before because without that I wouldn't have been able to have the well or the building or anything like that and to make any money at this you need to have that first so that's a big detail that I want to explain to people that you know just so you know this isn't easy at all none of this is easy it's really difficult um, and once you get to the point that I'm at it becomes easier because you have a lot of the infrastructure in place but infrastructure costs a lot of money but in my opinion, it's worth it because if you want to actually do this as a lifestyle, the infrastructure will help make it a sustainable lifestyle for you. So you're only working something like 40 hours a week. I have a walk-in cooler too. That is a huge piece of infrastructure that allows me to not have to harvest every five seconds. I can harvest a whole bed of something at once. Like today, I don't have much to do. Uh, and it's July. Um, which is incredible. Most of like a lot of farms that don't have that infrastructure are going to be harvesting right up until the last minute before the market. I don't have to do it that way. So there's all sorts of little hacks with the infrastructure that help make this a realistic and sustainable lifestyle. And it also helps employees be able to do it because you're never going to find employees that are as motivated as you if you're the farmer. So those are some things to think about with the infrastructure. And again, this is just a little glimpse. Can't explain all this in a 20 minute video, but let's move on to the next ingredient. All right, so probably the second most important thing to do uh, if you wanna earn something in the neighborhood of 4,000 a week in produce is growing the right crops. And that means high yield crops in a very small space. Um, and, and again, I'm talking about my context, which I have three acres of land to pay, play with. If you have 100 acres of land to play with, and you want to earn four thousand dollars a week it's this video is not even relevant to you i mean it's this is for really small space um the tractor farming i don't know anything about uh, i have nothing against it i think a lot of other crops are better for tractor farming but what i know is this kind of farming in basically greenhouse space um, because that's how i make money here in wyoming is greenhouses and what this kind of farming has an advantage over something like a hundred acre farm is we have produce much wider availability throughout the year. You know, we can harvest fresh carrots year round. You can't do that in the field anywhere. So um, that's the advantage of this type of farming. But, you know, I, I don't want to grow potatoes here. You know, potatoes need to be grown outside in a field. So this is just my context. And a couple examples of really high yield crops, I kind of had a uh, that the, my last video is a much better explanation of this, but I'm just going to glance over it here. This bed was on Monday, a full bed of carrots. We got 250 bunches of carrots out of this one bed. That's a new record for me because we had absolutely perfect germination. This bed next to me, I can tell is going to be about the same because the germination is flawless. Um, and I was only expecting 150 bunches out of this bed. So we got 250. If we sell those at a minimum, I mean, this is wholesale pricing, two, 250 a bunch. Um, let's see, what does that actually equate to? That's 250 times 2.5. <laughs> oh man, I'm bad at doing math in my head. Uh, well, right now we're selling carrots for $4 a bunch. Um, and that's kind of top dollar retail price. I'm going to try and hold that throughout the summer. That's pretty expensive, but these are very high quality carrots. People go nuts for them. So 250 times four is a thousand dollars. That's one crop. Um, I'm hoping to get two or three per year, but I'm not even going to worry about it because that yield is so high. So this is going to get planted to, uh, 
cilantro and dill tomorrow and that'll probably bring in another oh four to five hundred dollars ish maybe um we're having some issues with that crop right now but um i'm hoping we can actually squeeze in a winter crop after that so that's somewhere in the neighborhood between 750 and a thousand dollars for the first crop four to five hundred dollars for the second crop so we're at just say for conservative reasons we're at $1,100 there. If we get another winter crop of greens in here, something like spinach, um, which we have basically until like mid-September to plant. Um, if I have my paper pot stuff all dialed in, that's going to earn another probably $600 throughout the winter. So that's $1,700 on one 50-foot bed per year. That's how you make a lot of money with doing this um, and using that strategy throughout the whole farm. Um, high yield crops in a very small space. Tomatoes and cucumbers, those greenhouse crops are huge for the summer. Um, they earn, you know, $2,000 per bed in six months. You know, really, really high, high amount of product in a short period of time growing up. Um, there's a lot of labor involved with getting those kinds of numbers, but that's another huge one that makes a lot of money in a small space. So my last video, I go into a little more detail with this, but the key of getting the kind of numbers I'm talking about is high yield crops in a small space. You can't just grow whatever you want. You gotta grow the right crops. And that takes honestly a lot of research and learning from other farms doing re and just um, trying trial and error. I, I still can't do exactly what everybody else does. I have to tweak it to my context because some things actually can make money here that they don't make money in even like New York or Illinois or something like that. So high yield crops in a small space. So I'd say one of the most important ingredients for me to get to where I'm at today has been the Never Sink Farm course. If you've never heard of Never Sink Farm, go check them out on YouTube right now. Um, it's Connor Crickmore in upstate New York, and he has a farm course that's about $2,000 that explains how, basically how I did everything on this farm. Um, and it's the most valuable $2,000 I've ever spent in my life. If you think about what an average college course costs, it's usually more than $2,000 and a lot less useful. Um, my college courses were all useless and I probably took 30 of them and they were more than $2,000 a piece. Um, that course has taught me everything I need to know about how to set, I wouldn't say absolutely everything, but 90% 90, 90 of what I need to know. Um, and you know, a lot of this stuff you're still going to have to figure out on your own, but uh, this course shaved five years off my learning curve. Um, it's made it possible to get to the point where I'm at in a reasonable time period. Um, Cause you don't want to spend 10 years building a farm. You know, uh, I'm really only, this is my fourth season and I'm already getting to these numbers for real. So uh, it's fourth, fifth, it's kind of hard to explain, but um, that's pretty incredible to get to this point in that short of a time period. So that course absolute game changer explain I, i'm trying to basically make my farm like his not quite there yet i got a lot of my own problems i still got to deal with um by buying weed right here um i'm, I'm still a couple years away to being to where i really want to be with this farm but uh it's absolute game changer if you are serious about farming it is worth every penny uh, i tell all my friends that ask me um, what I'm doing. And if they're there, some of them are actually kind of interested in starting a farm. I tell them, take that course, at least if you live in the North, um, in the South, it's, it's a different game. So I don't know much about growing in the South, but I live in the North, a similar climate. And, um, that course has changed my life. So I cannot recommend it enough. Um, got to take that course. Um, it explains in far more detail than whatever I'm ever going to explain on YouTube. It's too hard to explain all of the stuff he talks about in that course. Um, on YouTube. I'm just doing little 20 minute glance over videos and kind of explaining to you like the business part of it and um, showing you what the potential is. But you know, if you're really serious, you gotta, you gotta put some money down and, and really learn. So that course will change your life if you want to do this. All right. So the fourth ingredient to making the kind of numbers I'm talking about happen is labor. And I have had a massive labor shortage this year. So one of the reasons I chose this as the background for this part is because these weeds shouldn't be here. Um, I've basically done the first three or four months of this season by myself. 
I had some some people that lasted a week or two, um, but basically I didn't have a real crew until two weeks ago, maybe three, maybe around the 4th of July, but um, that's pretty brutal. So to make all this stuff happen by yourself, you get really good at doing this kind of work, first of all, because you have to work is three times as fast as a normal person. Um, but at the end of the day, you just can't get to everything. So this is an example. I did not get to these weeds ever. And I have to prioritize things when you're in that space. Um, you have to prioritize. And these were lower priority than other things um, because they're actually not that many weeds in here. They're just big and bushy and about to go to drop seed. And it's a big problem. Um, this is extremely stressful for me to look at because I know if these start to drop seed, I got problems for years. It's, it's stressful. It's, it's, uh, it's part of farming. This is some is a urgent problem that needs to be done, dealt with as soon as humanly possible. But I have about 10 other things like that around here that I have to focus on first. And I know that these beds of carrots are going to be harvested starting next week. We're going to harvest one at a time and we'll probably get rid of all these weeds by then because I have enough help that I'll just have them cut them down and get rid of them. Um, so we're going to make it barely, but this is not good. You do not want to be in this situation. So you need to have good labor. And I'm still learning how to make that happen in my area. Um, I live in a really small town area and the labor pool is pretty small. So it's challenging um, to find people. So that's one of these things that I just had to figure out on my own. There's no farm course that's going to figure that one out for me. Um, cause every situation, every context is going to be different in that regard. So you need to have good labor and be able to afford to pay them. And that's part of the business part that I mentioned earlier. So you got to grow the right crops to be able to afford to pay the people to stay on top of things. Cause I'm sure there's people out there that can harvest $4,000 a week, but you probably can't do all the work necessary to get to that point by yourself. Um, I guess I basically got, I did most of the planting and stuff this year myself. Um, but you know, I don't want to harvest $4,000 a week myself. That's not sustainable. That is going to kill your back. You're going to be bedridden by the time you're 40. You need to have labor to make this a sustainable job. And the money, when, once you get to the kind of numbers I'm talking about, 10,000 a week is not out of the realm of possibility. Like a year or two, I'll be there, you know? So the numbers make sense if you study and learn all this stuff um, and i can't go into that too much in this video um, but the labor is absolutely necessary i'm paying people 17 dollars an hour right now to work here and i'm finding that that's necessary to get people to stay um, because this is hard work no matter how you slice it it's hard work it's physical i can do everything in the world to make it as easy as possible but at the end of the day there's bending over, it's working in hot conditions, it's working in cold conditions, you need to be tough. And that's a hard thing to find in today's day and age because most people do desk, desk job work. None of my friends that I grew up with, would, I would hire, none of them. They just couldn't do it. Um, and uh, I just love it enough where I want to do it. So, um, and I'm finding people that are, I'm slowly but surely finding people like that that want to work here that are really into this and love the work. Um, and I genuinely love the work when it's sustainable. When I have to do, you know, three people's jobs myself, that's when I don't love it. And it's hard. Um, it's not fun that way. But if you have enough people, this can be a really fun income source. Um, no matter how you slice it, you know, depending on whether you want to be a $300,000 a year farm or just a $30,000 a year side income, um, you know, well, if you're doing 30,000 a year, you could probably do that by yourself. You don't need labor. But if you want to do the kind of numbers I'm talking about, you need labor. Um, just to be able to clone yourself because you do not want to be doing this 70 hours a week working on Sundays. You have to have a life. I mean, you don't have to, but it's, it's just, if you want to do this for 30 years, you need to be able to take weekends off. And the only way you're going to do that is labor. So, um, and pay people what it's worth. You know, you've got to structure your farm so that $17 an hour is making you a lot more than that. And that's hard to explain in a video like this, but um, you need to be growing the right crops, getting them right, 
And the first couple of years, you're probably not going to have much labor. You're going to just have to learn the hard way. Um, cause even with all the videos I'm talking about, it's still not going to replace the actual experience of getting to the point of getting to 150, 200 bunches of carrots. You know, that took me years to get good at. That's not easy. So, but labor is what's going to make this sustainable and it's painful being a boss, explaining to people, uh, how the farm works, you know, dealing with problems, uh, you know, people's schedules and stuff. It is painful. I understand why nobody wants to have employees, but if you want to have a life, um, you got to have employees basically. So labor is a big part of this. So if you want to make $4,000 a week, you need to have a market to sell $4,000 a week. And that's hard. That is not something you can learn from a YouTube video. That is part of the blood, sweat, and tears of getting to the point of $4,000 a week. So right here, I have a bed of Salanova lettuce, which is uh, one of the most important business crops of the farm. And it's a huge part of how we make that money. But if you don't have a market for it, it's worthless. This only lasts about a week after you harvest it and you have a cold room, it will last maybe a week until you can't sell it anymore. And it's one of all of the salad greens are pretty much like that. You have to sell them basically between four and seven days um, or else they're, you can't sell them. They lose their value at that point. Um, so the way I do it is I sell about half of it to restaurants locally. Um, at a cheaper price than the market, but not too much cheaper. And then I sell most of it at the market at $10 a pound. Um, and it's selling really well right now. We're selling about 20 pounds a week at the market right now. Um, I would like to bump it up a lot more. My production is not quite right right now. Um, but this whole bed is 40 pounds per cut and two, you get two cuts roughly. That's like conservative. You, you could bump that up a lot if you know what you're doing. Um, but in the summer, I kind of just bank on that and have a lot of them growing at once because so many things can go wrong with lettuce. Uh, they bolt, rot, all sorts of things like that. But it's a real important one to always have. And you got to have markets. So I'm working on increasing my market this year. I'm going to be going to a bigger city market to try it out and see if um, that helps because... I am running out of customers here in uh, Cody, Wyoming, where I live. It's just too small of a population. Um, and that's just is what it is. I kind of always knew that was going to be something I eventually was going to have to deal with. And I don't want to have to do five small little markets. I want to go to one and sell a lot. So we're going to try that actually this Saturday. And I'm a little nervous about it, but we'll see. Um, because it's risky, you know, all of this kind of, you got to get used to risk with this kind of business because you're just living in risk. Everything you do is risk. Every crop you plant is risk. Every market you go to is risk, 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 risk. So I'm very comfortable with risk. This is probably one of the biggest risks I've ever taken, but I don't know. I'm ready for it. I already know what the worst case scenario is. If things fail, I got other options. So it is what it is, but you've got to have markets and um, stable markets are better. You know, restaurants take a long time to bake, make stable. I have basically only two restaurants that I work with because I've worked with tons of different ones. Um, and in, it's really not their problem. Um, it's sort of like they're trying to run their business and I'm trying to run mine. But a lot of times the numbers don't really make sense for a restaurant that's like in our town, they're pretty much just selling to tourists. So they don't really care about like fancy vegetables and stuff. You need to find the restaurants that do. And in my area, there's pretty few of them, but uh, you know, you also need stable crops to sell to them. I pretty much only sell to them like greens and herbs and a few specialty items that I know I can deliver all day, every week because they need consistency. If you can't deliver consistency, then you're not going to do real well with restaurants. Um, sometimes, it, it, you know, and this kind of depends on what kind of farm you want to run. I'm doing a little bit of both um, specialty crops and consistent crops, but the consistent ones are really the ones that make money. But I really want to be selling retail at the farmer's market and getting a higher price um, in bigger volumes. So that's my, really this farmer's market has been the most stable market for me. 
Um, and I think most farms are pretty much like that because you get a higher price. Um, restaurants, if they change chefs or something, you got a whole nother situation to deal with. And where are you going to sell that stuff next year? You go to a farmer's market and build a reputation, you have a huge ocean of people to sell to. And it's much less likely to go downhill. And there's still problems with farmer's markets. You know, bad weather one day, your sales are going to tank. Um, if there's an event going on in town that week, your sales are going to tank. That happened to me last week. Um, the markets part is really challenging. but So it's good to have a couple and sort of rely on a couple. Um, I, I have about four relatively stable markets, trying to consolidate it more and more. Um, but the markets are a huge part of it. And that means you got to be a salesman. You got to be a marketer. Um, you know, you can't just be romantic and grow stuff all day because you can't, if you don't, can't sell it, your, your business isn't going to last. You need to be a business person if you want to do this. Um, it, it, this isn't gardening anymore. This is farming. You need to have a market. And um, that requires a very different skill set than just tending to plants. So that's a little bit of a reality check if you just think this is all romantic and fun. And I do. I do. I mean, I love what I'm looking at right now. I'm in heaven, but I know the reality of it is not always as pleasant. Um, and when you're farming, you're the boss, you've got to do all, you got to make all these decisions and take all the risks and you'll get better at taking all the risks eventually. But, um, you know, you think about the pros and cons, the calculations and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, you win some, you lose some at the end of the day, it always is what it is. You can't do much about it. So, um, other than try your best. And, uh, the markets are the only way you're going to make the kind of money I'm talking about. So big thing to think about with this is markets, where are you going to sell it? And you've got to have that figured out before you get serious about this. So if you want to build a farm of any kind, I don't care if it's flower farm, cattle ranch, grass farm, cannabis farm, vegetable farm, you're going to have to put in some blood, sweat, and tears. It is not going to be easy. And I'm pretty sure that's been the history of farming since farming began. It's not easy, especially in our day and age when very few people work with their hands anymore. I'm standing in the nursery right now. This greenhouse costs about $25,000. It cost me about 120 hours of my time to build and probably another 20 or 30 to wire, put all the fans in. And also this climate battery that we got in here was very painful to put in. Um, that's a lot of blood, sweat and tears. That was a lot of me working on Sundays by myself in 90 degree heat, drilling screws into metal. Um, and that is brutal work if you're doing it by yourself and you're farming at the same time, because I had to basically do it all on Sundays because I still have was farming to make money to pay for it. Um, that means having no life, you know, I don't, I'm not saying that everybody has to do that. I'm sure, um, if I was more, if I was smarter and I knew better at the time, I probably could have made things go a little bit smoother. Um, like my next greenhouse, I'm going to pay people to build it, but I'm at the point I can do that now. I wasn't, I didn't have that kind of money three years ago. I think it was two years ago now. It's really not that long ago. Um, this is just one example of blood, sweat, and tears. Me putting in my irrigation throughout the farm was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, we put all of the pipe six feet deep, but the week we did it, it was in April. It was 32 degrees and snowing. And I had hired somebody to do it and I couldn't not do it. I couldn't push it off. I'd scheduled the excavator and all that stuff. Had no choice. And this storm just kind of came out of nowhere. That's working outside, getting wet, fusing pipe. Um, it was brutal. It, it, that definitely put some hair on my chest. Um, and I had never done anything like that yet at that point in my life. Um, and at the end of the day, it's just part of the experience of building this, th this farm and Every farm's got stories like that. Um, you have to be driven um, and be willing to put in three to four years, I would say, to get to this point. I mean, probably I've heard of people being able to do really well 
in two years. I think in a different market, I probably could have done better. Um, and if I had done my homework a little bit better, made a couple of better decisions, I probably could have shaved a year or two off of my learning curve. Um, but this is the first year we're going to be really profitable. And um, I'm really confident saying that now that I see the way everything's going. We only got another two and a half months of growing season. Um, and we're looking pretty good at this point. And I kind of know which crops to focus on if things go wrong with stuff like the stuff behind me, because this is really risky stuff. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, you got to be willing to put in a couple years uh, of just kind of toughing it out and not having a much of a life. Um, I think every farm's probably gone through something like that. But if you really care about it and you want to do this, it's worth it. You know, it, to me, this is worth it because I want the rest of my life to be surrounded with this. I also want to do all sorts of other things too, which is why I'm really motivated to find good employees because I think I can make it so I don't even have to be here eventually. Um, because all of this stuff is common sense. It's not rocket surgery. You don't need to go to college to know, do any of this stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a couple years of really tough times to, to make it happen. So something to think about. It's not sexy. This kind of topic isn't going to get me any views, but it's the reality of the situation, you know, three to four years of really toughing it out and making all this infrastructure stuff happen on a budget is challenging. Um, when you have money to pay other people to do it, it becomes a lot faster, a lot easier, but you got to have this kind of infrastructure to get these kinds of crops. Um, you can't grow tomatoes like this outside. You just can't. So blood, sweat, and tears, a couple years is definitely necessary. All right, so I think we're in my favorite part of the farm right now, which is the field. And uh, it's the most romantic part of the farm to me. But it's also kind of have the most energy um, and memories for me because this is the first place I started growing in. And uh, this is the fourth season we've been growing in this field, which is really not that much. You know, most farms are, you know, I wouldn't say most, but a lot of... Uh, Bigger farms out there have been doing it for a little bit longer than that, but um, this is where a lot of my blood, sweat, and tears is too, is this piece of ground. And it still has a long way to go, but um, I'm really proud of the way it looks right now. It's looked far worse in the past. I have a couple of videos on my Instagram of me pulling dandelions this spring. Um, the whole back 40 was covered in dandelions because I had neglected it last year and let it go to seed. And that was one of the hardest weeding experiences I've ever done. I basically used a broad fork to pull them all out. That was just not, not good. Um, do not want to be in that position. So, you know, a lot of lessons are learned best the hard way. And I've learned a lot the hard way just by doing it the wrong way. And uh, makes you never want to have that experience again. And that was one of them. So I'm really proud of the way it looks right now, even though it's far from where I want it to be. The weeds are still pretty bad um, for my standards, what I want it to be. Um, but at the end of the day, perseverance is an absolutely necessary ingredient to get to uh, anything close to this. You got to be able to persevere through all those tough times. You know, when I saw that, th this back corner, basically the whole field was covered in dandelions. I pulled them all by hand myself. Nobody, I had one guy help me for like a couple of days, but it took me a good month to do that of brutal backbreaking forking. Cause you need to, when you're pulling dandelions, you need to pull them out by the tap root and the tap roots this long. And, um, it's absolutely brutal. And this is absolute concrete. I can't put my finger through my soil. It's concrete. We're in Wyoming. It's heavy clay soil. I've done, I've thrown, the book at this soil to make it workable. And I haven't gotten there yet. I'm adding sand. I've added, uh, I think sand's going to work long term. I'm adding compost, but that just goes away after a year. Um, uh, wood chips are in the compost. We're adding peat moss. Um, it's a lot of work to get your soil right, um, depending on your context, you know, and that just takes time. That's part of the perseverance. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm growing crops and it's working pretty well. It's just tough. Um, it's tough for employees. I'm used to 
used to it, but it's really tough for employees. But, um, you know, and it's tough. I just got the paper pot transplanter this year and I'm having a lot of trouble with it in my soil. And I kind of knew that was going to be a problem. So I'm not really surprised, but we're making it work. Um, but I, uh, yeah, there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears just in that. Um, so you just got to persevere, you know, you just can't give up. Um, if you don't love it enough, um, you're probably not going to persevere through those problems. You know, this kind of thing is gotta be pa a passion. Um, this isn't just some hobby. It's, this is, this is a life's passion that you're doing. If you want to get into this, um, yeah, and I, I, I've got a couple friends that are interested and I kind of looking at their life and I'm like, you probably don't want to do it like me. You just don't, it's, it's not going to work. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to have a good life if you try and do it like me. I just want to be real honest with certain people. You got to be pretty crazy. Um, and I think if I, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is I, I wish I saw something like this when I was like 16. I wish I was exposed to this when I was a lot younger cause I would have started a lot younger. Um, but I didn't, I didn't really get exposed to this until I was probably in my mid twenties. Um, and I didn't really get serious until I was like late twenties. Um, and now here I am, but, um, this is something I could have started when I was like 18. Um, and that's one of the things I'm really excited about um, with my labor stuff is I hope to get some high school grad that wants to learn this and, you know, um, even if they don't want to become a farmer, these skills you're going to learn here are pretty much a lost art. Um, you know, a lot of, this is like a trade. Um, the way I see this, this is a trade, you know, we're growing vegetables to be a local produce department basically. And, um, really, really high quality vegetables for a produce department locally. And, uh, you know, you gotta be pretty obsessed to make that happen because otherwise you're just not going to get there. Um, and, uh, you know, that's one of the big things that you gotta, you gotta want to do all of the other six things I mentioned and you gotta be tough enough to, to make it through all of that. And, uh, most people aren't it's just brutal honesty. Um, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. And I, I really truly do love this. I'm obsessed. Um, ever since I started seeing the ever seeing farm videos on YouTube, I mean, I was obsessed before that, but that really took me to another level um where i saw the real potential in this because i think he's just made it um into a way that's applicable to the whole country um well not the whole country but like a lot of pit places in america can grow like that um if if you put in the blood sweat and tears and perseverance but i mean this style is profitable um it's sustainable where you have a weekend you know, a lot of farming methods aren't like that and it's beautiful. I mean, um, I love to walk out here at night. It's not stressful for me. I'm stressed about some things over there, but I know I've dealt with enough problems that I know that that's not as bad as it looks. The dandelion thing was bad. Um, I should have made a video about that, but anyway, I just wanted to go over a couple of the ingredients on what it takes to get to where I'm just now reaching. Um, cause I've been thinking about it a lot and, um, just want to make sure people know that it's not a walk in the park at all. Cause I think my last video made it easy, made it sound easy and it's not, um, it's difficult. It's not for everybody. And, um, but I do want to inspire some people. I, I, I probably sound pretty negative in this video, but, um, but I want to be very realistic too. Cause it, you know, if you, if it could suck, if you put two years of your life into this and you quit, that would suck. You know, you gotta, you gotta think about all this stuff before you get into it. But to me, this is worth all of that for me, not for everybody, but to me, this brings me a lot of joy. And I think it brings a lot of other people joy. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next one.